Hey everyone, the name's Eric Thor, and in today's video, allow me to talk to you about judging and perceiving because you have been fed a misconception, and that is that the world can be divided into so called organized, neat freaks, compulsive, obsessive, boring, stale, rigid, linear judging types, and creative, abstract, lazy, relaxed, carefree, oblivious always late perceivers. The Myers-Briggs type indicator invented the dichotomy judging and perceiving, but where does it even come from? It's not Carl Jung's works. It's not what he, he even, he didn't even use the terms. He used the terms irrational and irrational, and they don't even describe the same uh, way of thinking or that same uh, type to begin with. But still, is there something behind the MBTI claims? Can society be divided into judges and perceivers? Well, actually, did you know that in the Myers-Briggs perspective, all of the cognitive functions that you use are based on judging and perceiving. It's the J or P letter that decides your cognitive functions. With just a flip of a letter, INFPs and INFJs are separated with two, un four unique cognitive functions different from one another and told that these types are in uh, completely uh, different. You've been told this, but it's not completely true. In fact, there are similarities between INFPs and INFJs in the sense that both are introverts and that both are intuitives and both are feeling types. And that actually does mean a lot, even if the cognitive setup might be different. With judging and perceiving, what it seems to be about is control. And in uh, the neuroscience world where we talk about how there is a difference in motivation where we have people that take a long time to become interested in anything, the so-called judges, and the people that become interested in things really quickly, the so-called perceivers. There you have an actual supported dichotomy of differences. You actually have people that need more time to develop an interest in things and need and when they have an interest, that's the interesting thing. Neuroscience suggests that when they, these people have an interest in what they do, they hold on to that interest for a long time and they become much more motivated. So you have people in the world that are more driven by long-term motivation towards a project, long-term projects, long-term closure, closure on things that take a long time to crystallize. You have people that think in terms of long-term projects, plans and goals. And you have people that think in terms of situational opportunities constantly emerging. I believe that with judges and perceivers, you have a very important dichotomy, a super important dichotomy, to be honest. Uh, there are some major differences between INFJs and INFPs, and between INTJs and INTPs, in the sense that the judging type, because of this goal-oriented preference, is a preference, not a total boxed-in definition. Uh, because of this preference towards long-term projects, the INTJ and the INFJ share a similarity. The ISFJ and the ISTJ also share the similarity. The ESTJ and the ESFJ also share the similarity. The ENTJ and the ENFJ, they all share the similarity of wanting to and feeling a sense of satisfaction when they are given long-term focus. And I mean here, not just uh, that 45-minute uh, work on something. I mean that day-to-day -day scrolling through a list or a plan that you have inside your mind or written down. Judges want to uh, work towards something long-term. They think in terms of projects and they ignore situational circumstance. Uh, the truth is, judges don't care so much about situational incentives. Uh, we don't care what is practical in the moment. We don't necessarily take as much heed to situational obstacles or issues or things to think about. At least we shouldn't. And uh, because we are judging types, we can pursue our projects even if it creates a temporary inconvenience. Like 
the fact that you don't even know what you're working on or the fact that you have no idea how to get there or that your project seems long and abstract and <laughs> so far away. Uh, while the perceiving type would be discouraged by the long-term project that offers no clear immediate reward, the judger can somehow, even when discouraged, even when there is nobody to share you on, nobody to tell you it's a good job, nobody to uh, pay you for it immediately, you can go for this project and you can keep on it and you can spend time developing it. Like how some people left their houses searching for food or searching for something and going out wandering until they found it. That's the judging type. The judging type can even be so oblivious to changes and opportunities in their world that they are walking forward and they see berries around them and they're going, but that's not the food that I wanted. <laughs> so the similarities here, the funny thing about the judges is just how narrow-minded we are, like ridiculously narrow-minded in that we have that thing that we want and nah, nothing else. I don't want anything else. I want that one thing. That's the judger's way. It's that, of course... Um, to us, a lot of the time, those berries, they don't feel like rewards, but they feel like stressors. And that's the interesting thing. It's about stress. Judging and perceiving is about how we manage stress. And it's fascinating to realize that for the judging type, often these small fruits, these easy fruits that you only have to work a little for, or that you only have to alter your course a little towards, can seem like stress, like uh, the thought of for a judger to change your course and to start exploring the berry bushes you see far in the distance instead of that goal that you were headed towards, that it creates stress. Even if it, you can clearly see that there's food there, uh, that uh, ability, and if you do that, if you start going for those berry bushes, you feel that stress because you know that you should be heading towards your goal and you feel like, when am I gonna work towards that? When am I gonna start on that project? And so you feel stress. And so you have like three kinds of judges. You have the immature ones that <laughs> refuse those bushes and that keep going, even if that makes them hunger and starve to death. Uh, and then you have those compulsive judges that uh, keep running towards those bushes as fast as possible to get them so that they can soon go back to that goal they had. But then when they get there, they are so exhausted and then they see something else that they need to do and then they run to that and they keep on running and running in circles as hoping to get done as sick quickly as possible so that they can start heading towards that goal in the distance. You also have the, of course, mature judging types, and that's the ideal. The ideal is being able to factor in side quests into your equation. Being able to make your side quests become depot stations on the way to your goal. Realizing that there are side quests that can help you towards what you need, and there are distractions that can keep you from going where you want. Being able to set boundaries, even when other people are asking you to change your mind, even when you have people around you to think about that ask you to also go for the other place and the other place there. Being able to say, no, actually I need to head in that direction. And being able to go in that direction, even if other people are asking you to change your mind. But also being able to compromise to the degree that you can pursue some side quests so that you don't starve so that you don't um, lose time, because sometimes you can actually lose time doing, uh, being choosing the stubborn option. With the perceiving type, you have, of course, that other temperament. Often, there is, of course, a long-term goal or a plan. Uh, you have to get the group to a certain goal, but then you see those rose bushes and wow, they look so tasty, like berries, that sounds amazing. And then you tell everyone, let's go there because I see berries, let's go to that place, I see water we can drink, let's go to that place, I see an opportunity emerging, or wait, what could be behind that? The perceiver is concerned with opportunity, the world of ever emerging changes and opportunities. The perceiver finds that when they can explore these opportunities, they feel relief, they feel relaxed, they feel that state of 
sen, in a sense. It's uh, weird, but it's sen for the perceiving type. And for them, maintaining a course when you see the bushes and, have, and, and everyone else telling you, no, you need to go to that course, you need to be on time, you need to follow that procedure. For the perceiver, it's like, but I see those bushes over there, but I see water over there. Don't we need to drink? Don't we need to restock? Uh, the perceiver it has the kind of duty to make sure that people aren't pursuing a goal that is stupid or pursuing a goal in a way that is stupid because uh, the perceiver must try to integrate to make sure that when they are doing something they can get there in a way that fits and uh, allows them to jump from platform to platform. You will want as a perceiver to use schedules, calendars and easy rewards, instant rewards. Uh, you will want to use things that can the, as jumping blocks towards uh, your goals and your plans. The perceiving types that I see that are the most mature always have that ability to manage that constant emerging chaos. They are the people that seem like they have so much to do and so much on their plate but somehow they are always able to jump and balance the equation. The perceiving types that are immature are the ones that keep rushing towards uh, those instant gratifications and never get anything done. They distract themselves with easy opportunities but realize and forget that sometimes you have to pursue objective dist rewards far away in the distance. The compulsive perceiving types are the ones that push through and go for those goals, keep on that organization, but not in a way that keeps you satisfied, but only in a way that makes you more stressed because uh, you keep thinking about how you want to do those changes, but you have no time because you have such a strict calendar, such a strict, strict uh, organization far beyond your needs. needs. So think about that. Think about how you manage stress. No matter if you are a judge or a perceiver, and make sure you balance your energy equation. I hope you all enjoyed this video and as always, may your neurons be with you.